Hello everybody, Maven here, and today we're going to find out what the best primary weapon to pair with the Gear Falcon's Hauberk is. And I did do a crazy build video last week on the Buried Bloodline with the Gear Falcon's Hauberk, but a lot of you guys in the comment section they didn't have the buried bloodline. I would say like 97% of you guys. So I thought I would make this video for you. Uh, also, some people just prefer to use a primary with Gear Falcons anyways, rather than a special. And I did make this same exact video like over a year ago when the Gear Falcons Hauberk first came out. But it's time to update it because, you know, over a year has gone by and we got a lot of new avoid primary weapons. So I retested all of the best options and we're going to find out the best one. So let's get to it. But first, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We just hit 40K. Thank you so much again for that. And we are well on our way to that big goal of 50K by the end of 2024. And you can help me get there. And thank you so much if you do. And hope you enjoy the video. So we're going to be testing a lot of weapons in this video in both the Legend Lost Sector and also the Hydroponics Delta. Just so you know, ads in Hydroponics Delta have double the health of raid ads. So if you're wondering how these weapons would do in a raid, if it does well in Hydroponics Delta, then it'll absolutely crush a raid. So we're going to start off with the title SMG you can currently get from the Guardian Games for just a few more days before it's gone. And I'm going to be honest with you, this video was originally meant to be a title review. I was going to say, hey guys, check out this title god roll. You only have a few more days left to get it. It's the best primary you can pair with the Gear Falcon's Hallbrook. I seriously thought it would be because it has such a good role of Repulsor Brace with the new Deconstruct. And as you know, Deconstruct is very, very similar to Rewind Rounds. So our SMG just has a very large clip size while also giving us overshields for survivability with that Repulsor Brace. But the more and more I tested more weapons, the more I realized maybe this SMG isn't the best thing to pair with Gear Falcon's Hauberk because there were other things that were doing better. So the idea of this video kind of shifted away from a title review video to a what primary is the best to pair with Gear Falcon's Hauberk video. So when it comes to this role, I will say right now that there is a fatal flaw with Repulsor Brace with Volatile Rounds is that you actually have to kill a Void debuff target with the gun itself. If they die to the Volatile Explosion from Volatile Rounds, you will not get an overshield. So that is one big flaw. And also, you do have a bigger mag size, so you got some decent sustained damage, but just in general, the amount of damage you do with this SMG just doesn't feel that significant compared to our other options we're gonna be testing in this video. I really feel that the primary roles that you go for in PvE usually have to have a damage perk. And in the background gameplay at this point, I'm probably showing the Legend Lost Sector gameplay by now, I don't know, but I was curious how good this overshield was. And it can save your life in a pinch. It can be clutch, but I was not impressed with it overall. It felt like a very weak overshield, like a goblin red bar can just two tap your overshield down. So it really left me wanting more and also that flaw with the volatile rounds, it just didn't really work out too good. So I'm gonna have to pass on the title. And next up is the SMG that back then when the Gear Falcons came out, I would always use this SMG with it and it is the Funnel Web with Subsistence and Frenzy. Back then I actually used Adrenaline Junkie over Frenzy, but ever since I got the Frenzy rule, that's what I have been using. Gives you a 15% damage buff and plus 100 reload speed, making it feel extra crispy. And that Frenzy is what makes all the difference. It really feels like it's hitting a lot harder than the title. Also, the mag issue is it's pretty decent. You know, you don't got that deconstruct, but subsistence gives you ammo when you get kills. And you also got Vice Stinger, which procs every now and then. It got nerfed, but it's, it's still not bad when it happens. And also there's just something about these Viced SMGs, these recluse style SMGs that just feel right. I don't know what it is, I can't pinpoint it, but there's just something that feels so good about them. So personally, I like this one a lot better than the title. And when I tried it out in the solo Legend Lost Sector, I would say it definitely felt a lot better. But the next SMG is the Unforgiven. This one most players would probably agree is the better SMG because it has Demolitionist and Frenzy and when you're on Void and you got Devour, you're building into grenades. Having that Demolitionist is very, very good. However, there's one issue with this kind of SMG for me, and that is the moments before you proc Frenzy. You know, there's nothing really helping it. And it's just sluggish because with the funnel web, you got that subsistence and vice stinger. With the title, you have that deconstruct, like you got these initial mag size bonuses. With the unforgiven, you got that 30 round magazine 
and you got a very slow reload and it just feels very sluggish until Frenzy is proc to give you that 100 reload speed. Because you got nothing really helping that mag size like the other two SMGs do. It's just a 30 round mag, you get what you see. But I will say when you actually proc that Frenzy, the Unforgiven in my opinion is the best of the three Void SMGs for the Gear Falcon's Hauberg. Because you're building into those nades and you're also hitting really hard. You're hitting harder than the 900 RPM. You know, as a 750 with Frenzy, it's definitely putting in more work. But despite all that praising, I would still personally pick the Final Web just because the initial moments before proccing Frenzy are definitely a lot smoother with that subsistence. It's not as sluggish at the start. Plus, Demolitionist was shadow nerfed and doesn't give you as much grenade energy as it did before, so it's not even super worth it to even run Demolitionist on your primary weapons anymore. And then next, I wanted to try out the Ross Arago Auto Rifle. This one has really been making waves this season. Season, and I managed to get the god roll of rewind rounds with onslaught. So rewind rounds is basically like doubling your magazine size overall, letting you take longer advantage of that onslaught perk. And I gotta say, just as a standalone weapon, the Ross Arago is so good feeling to use when you get that onslaught proc and you get like a gigantic like 100 round mag size because of rewind rounds. It's a really nice weapon that you're gonna want to keep your eyes on. However, for the Gear Falcons build specifically, it has the same exact glaring issue that the title had, the Repulsive Brace title, because you have to get the kill with the actual weapon's bullets itself to proc Onslaught, because if that volatile round explosion gets the kill, you are not going to proc Onslaught, and the Onslaught timer is very, very short. It's like five seconds. So if you do not pick up that kill and the Volatile Rounds does, you're gonna lose your buff and have to reproc it. So it really does not work well with Volatile Rounds. It's a huge flaw. And it's really disappointing, especially for Repulsor Brace, because it's supposed to be a Void-based perk, yet it doesn't work with Volatile Rounds, the Void-based buff. It makes no sense, and I really wish that Bungie would program some kind of thing to make these perks work with Volatile Rounds, Onslaught, and Repulsor Brace. Because if it did work, then the Ross and Rago, in my opinion, would be undoubtedly the best thing to pair with the Gear Falcon's Hauberk, in terms of primary weapons, of course, because, you know, obviously the Buried Bloodline's better, but still. But when I tried it out in the Legend Lost Sector, I would say it definitely felt like it wasn't hitting as hard as some of the other things that we tried out today. It definitely feels like a pellet gun in comparison in high level content. That's just how auto rifles feel in end game content really. So because of the flaw with the volatile rounds, I'm going to say pass on Ross Arago. And next up, we got the Doom of Chelchis, one of my personal favorite things to pair with the Gear Falcon's Hauberk. When I did that first Gear Falcons video a year ago, testing out to see what was the best primary to pair with Gear Falcons, the Doom of Chelchis ended up being the winner of that video. And back then, volatile rounds worked a little bit differently. I said because of the explosive payload, it actually felt like it was proccing those volatile explosions even more than other weapons. I don't know if that's still the case. Bungie probably fixed it, but I don't know, something about it just feels like it's proccing volatile more consistently. And typically scout rifles are not very good for like low level ad clear or like, you know, raid level ad clear. But because of explosive payload plus frenzy, the thing's a beast and it also feels great to hip fire. Just its model, it reloads very, very quickly. It's just a very solid feeling weapon. And personally, I have nothing bad at all to say about the Doom of Chelchis when it comes to the Gear Falcon's Hauberk. Like if I wasn't using the Buried Bloodline with the Gear Falcon's Hauberk and I had to use a primary, I would probably pick the Doom of Chelchis, especially for like tougher content where you need to keep your distance so you can actually put in the work with the Gear Falcons from all the way across the map, no problem. And when I tested it out in the Solo Legend Lost Sector, needless to say, it put in the finest of work. No issues whatsoever. It did go a little bit slower paced than the rest of the weapons because of course it is a scout rifle, kind of keep your distance with it but it's still not a bad weapon to get up close with because of the hip fire explosive payload makes it feel very good for those type of situations really. And by the way, another long range weapon that I tried out here was the Lethophobia and I had a successful warm up and explosive head and you know how explosive head is similar to time payload, you get that delayed explosion. I wanted to see if giving volatile rounds to the bow would make the initial arrow make them volatile and then the timed payload, the explosive head, going off later would immediately trigger that volatile explosion. Turned out that it didn't really work. 
So it's kind of trash and I didn't really need to show it in the video, but Duma Chelchis is the end all be all long range primary gear Falcons weapon. Nothing's gonna be better than this, trust me. But now we're moving on to hand cannons. Somewhat of a long range option, more of a mid range option. I tried out three different hand cannons that I think would be good with the gear Falcons. I tried out the palindrome with stats for all, one for all. And then I tried out the Word of Crota that had Dragonfly destabilizing rounds um, because I thought, you know, the Dragonfly explosion would just make all of the enemies that destabilizing made volatile to cause like a giant chain reaction of explosions. Turns out it wasn't that good. The one you are seeing in the background gameplay is the Ikelos hand cannon, the one that I felt was above and beyond the best hand cannon to pair with the Gear Falcons. And I originally thought uh, it's a 180 RPM hand cannon, one of the worst archetypes in the game. Nobody cares, it's gonna be garbage, but it ended up far exceeding my expectations actually. It was way better than I thought and actually one of the best options for this like low level type of content. Because I had a backup mag and the way I crafted it, I could carry 19 rounds in the magazine and I had subsistence and it wasn't even enhanced subsistence by the way. So the mag size was tremendous on this thing. And then I also had frenzy so I could reload it super fast when I finally had to reload, got that 15% damage buff. And if you're going up against any enemy type that you can feasibly hit their crit spots, this is gonna be a great option. But when I tried it out in the legend lost sector, it wasn't as good. It was fine, but it wasn't as good against the Vex because you can barely hit their crits. You know, goblins have tough crits to hit and such. But against the Fallen and against the Cabal and, you know, other races out there where you can hit their crits, uh, it's a great option, actually. I was very impressed with this. And if I had to use a primary weapon to pair with Gear Falcons in, like, easy, low-level content, I would probably choose this one. You know, it was actually very, very solid. But when the difficulty picks up and gets mildly challenging, I would immediately swap to the Doom of Chelchis, to be completely honest. But now we're finally moving on to sidearms. And the sidearms that I did test were the Swift Verdict, the Fiora Tura, and then the Seven Seraph SI2, which is the one that you're seeing on the screen now. And then ever since that 20% sidearm buff and then SMGs received no buff, sidearms are just like the strongest hitting primary weapons in PvE by far. And by the background gameplay, I'm sure you can tell. It was above and beyond, just clearly the most damaging option out of everything we tried today. And by the way, the role I had on the 7 Seraph SI2 was Threat Detector and Surrounded. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the perk Surrounded. It feels like 90% of the time it's not proc'd. But when it is proc'd, you can absolutely shred things. like. That tanky major in that hydroponics delta main room, I was able to kill him in two magazines of a sidearm. That's really, really good. And then I was able to follow it up by just decimating those groups of adds, no problem. Just absolutely shreds through them like a hot knife through butter. So seriously, if you're doing any kind of content that is very close quarters, like up in your face, I would say use a sidearm, 100%. Screw SMGs. Like I did the testing earlier thinking that I was gonna like SMGs more, but then when we got to sidearms, I just knew sidearms were the way to go. So moving on to the solo legend law sector, and uh, of course a sidearm still slapped way harder than everything else I tried by far. And I was using the Fiora Tura 59 in this clip, and I was actually using my PVP roll, which is killing when kill clip, and it's still put in the most work. And uh, I actually didn't really keep a PvE roll of this. I have one that's Pugilist and Swashbuckler, which is not too bad, but personally, I prefer Kill Clip. And it can also get Golden Tricorn, which I don't personally love. I know some people love that perk, but personally, I don't really like it that much. And it can also get Repulsor Brace, but unfortunately, it's in the right side column where all the damage perks are. And like I said, I think you're definitely going to want a damage perk in uh, your PvE rolls because otherwise it's going to feel very weak like the title. So I would probably go with something like Pugilist Kill Clip. And by the way, you can still farm the Fiora Tura from Banshee. And I also did try out the Swift Verdict in the Legend Lost Sector, which was the old sidearm that dropped from Prophecy. Can't really get it anymore. And I was using my PvP roll again, which is Surplus Kill Clip. And it was good at times, but it just felt a little more sluggish than the Fiora Tura. I definitely preferred the Fioratura. 
And I would say I also prefer the Fioritura over the 7 Serif SI2, just because I'm not that big a fan of Surrounded. So TLDR, Fioritura for close range content, Duma Chelsea for long range content. That's my final verdict. Feel free to debate in the comments down below and let me know if I might have missed your favorite Gear Falcons Hauberk primary weapon. And uh, Maven, where are the Pulse Rifles? You didn't test out any Pulse Rifles. Well, sorry to tell you, Jimmy, but Pulse Rifles are the weakest weapon type in PvE. Bungie really needs to do something about that. So that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment because your interaction is the key to this video's success because it pleases the algorithm gods. So I greatly appreciate it. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. I'm on my way to that big 50K by the end of the year and you can help me get there. So make sure to subscribe if you're new. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. See you later.